What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. This is for entertainment purposes only. And before we get to the charts, I want to show you this is exactly why you don't ever blindly follow anybody. And yeah, these guys are pretty good, but sometimes I'm like, dude, what are what were you guys thinking? Are, were you just not doing your job this week or like honest to god, I mean, even I was saying or like I'm pretty sure I'll go back in my videos and confirm, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure even I was saying that this was going lower, not higher. But you can see this was Sunday's video. Price was right here, and they're saying USD up. So if you were sitting here looking for buy setups this week, you would have been screwed over big time. Or if you just jumped in long because they said it was going up, you would have been screwed over big time. Let's look at. Here's the dollar. Here's uh, here's Sunday, right here. That's exactly where they said price was going up from. And it dropped, went up a little, dropped, went up a little, and dropped. Huge. Something was telling me the entire time, and I didn't really know too, too much on Sunday, but the more price started to play out, I was getting a little clue there, a little clue there, a little clue there. And I said it last night, definitely, I was like, yeah, I think price is going to come up and take out this double top. And I know, even though we had a bearish engulfing, see this? On the daily chart, we had a bearish engulfing, but I said I'm going to disregard that. I'm disregarding that bearish engulfing because it doesn't mean anything. Context matters. And, uh, yeah, there was just too many signs saying up. And it went up. It went up big time. But, well, let's see. What happened? I had two positions out last night. I had a Euro. Euro USD and GBP USD. So, I had a buy order right here. Which... Would have worked out pretty damn well. Problem was, is I had my stop right here, below this wick. And it got me. So it took me out for uh, another 120 bucks last night. But GBP USD did not. Uh, it, did, like, it didn't come back down to where I thought it was going to come back down to. It kind of just started floating sideways and stayed. So this morning... I threw in a small, you know, small conservative little position long on GBP USD because I figure, you know, this is a 50 50 anyway, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure it's going up. So I threw in a small one. And then I had my tablet at work and I, I was watching as soon as, like, it, it was five minutes before 8 30, I was. At that tablet, I had my position for Euro USD. I had take profit in place. I had stop loss ready to go. I had the position amount ready to go. And all I had to do was sit there and go bloop and push the button to get in. And I was just waiting for a flinch. Just a flinch was all I needed out of... Uh, as soon as 8.30 hit, as, as soon as I saw a flinch long, I was like, I'm in. Problem was, that flinch took us all the way up to here. Like, immediately. It was crazy. It was like we were here, and then all of a sudden we were there. So as soon as that happened, I was like, bloop, I'm in. And the reason, you know, you always have to wonder if, if they're going to do the, you know, the, the old fake them and shake them and, and throw the market up, take out a high or a low. But in this case, I thought it was going up to begin with. So price already came down and was taking out lows so there's really no reason for it to you know there was no reason for them to launch it down first so i mean it was in a prime position ready to go so i'm definitely learning a lot of little pieces and bits of information and things that i've done wrong the things i'm not going to make a mistake on again and this is one of them like, whenever there's red flag news coming out and it's, like, at 8.30 in the morning, I'm not, I'm not going to... I'm not going to place a buy order and a stop loss 
anywhere the night before. I'm going to wait and just see where price is when I wake up. And wherever price is where I wake up, maybe a half an hour before the red flag news, depending on which direction I think it's going to go. And if we potentially need to take out a swing high or a swing low first in order to move that direction, like if we were going down, for instance, if, if we were going down today, they would have launched this up, took out this high and went down, but we went up. And that's the direction I thought it was going, so yeah. We we went up. So I had this position and GBP. And uh, I had a take profit like right here. Then I had a sell order like right here for a hundred thousand units, and I had then I had a stop loss like right here for that hundred thousand unit sell order. So this thing launched up, hit, hit my take profit on uh, GBP USD, hit my take profit on Euro USD, and I was back to break even. I made like, I don't know, $1,400 in 10 minutes from that, but then it hit my 100,000 unit sell order, and I wasn't profit for a second, and I'm like, ooh, cool. And then I put the phone down, then it launched up and hit my stop. So then I lost another 300 bucks, or a little under, a little under 300 bucks. So I'm down like, I don't know, 280 bucks for the week. That's not so bad. Could be worse. So now what? And you know, you know, with the red flag news, that was definitely, this is definitely a learning uh, experience. Um, just, just let price do whatever it's gonna do the night before and see where it is in the morning, 100%. That's how I'm gonna play that from now on. And I'm never going to miss ever again, ever, ever again, am I going to miss something like this? This is a monthly chart, freaking monthly chart support trend line with freaking respect all over the place. This is a bull flag on top of that. I should have, I should have put a, a you know, a sizable position in here when we were at the trend line. You know, aka my strategy, buying and selling at trend lines, um, and just held it no matter what price was doing. No matter what, if it's coming up correctively choppy, it doesn't freaking matter. Because look how far it moved. Even correctively, even choppy, that would have been a nice profit. And this thing will probably keep going. It looks like we're starting a flat right now. It looks like it might bounce like this, possibly go higher at least, at least to this weekly resistance trend line. I mean, that's where we're going. That's where we're headed. So if this, so if NZD, if NZD CAD, if this is a running flat here and this thing decides to come back down to this trend line, I'm in, I'm in right there. And I'm going to, I'm going to hold this until we hit this trend line and see what happens from there. If we bust through, then I'll wait for the retest and get back in right where I got out and keep going. But for now, that's probably one trade that I'm I'm looking at for for the future. I don't I don't I don't think I'm gonna sell it. I'm just gonna wait for it to come back down. And uh, I have a couple other trades that I'm looking at, but you know, Euro USD. So it didn't it didn't stop at the trend line. That's the issue here. It busted through you look at the dollar the dollar busted through its uh, support trend line by a lot so I mean th this thing will really have to so I don't know if this is a false break and then it then it comes back up or if this if this comes retests you know comes up and retests this and drops further that could be a possibility as well but regardless, USD CAD, this is one that I'm, I'm looking to, to get in here because we have, just like Euro USD, we have a major like double top with tons of money sitting up here, tons of money. So we're all like, we're in a bullish trend. 
six month chart here, we're bullish. We're still bullish. Six month chart, weekly chart, we're bearish. Monthly chart, we're bearish as of right now. Uh, well, actually, monthly chart, we are kind of bullish, but weekly chart, we're, we're bearish. But this could be a pullback. This is the 382 Fibonacci retracement level that just happens to line up with a nice, nice, juicy look. Like, look at this. Look how much time price spent in this area. It just loves this area. It comes through it and there, and it, it's just all over this area. So this is the 382 from this swing low to this swing high. Sorry, let me clean that up. This swing low to this swing high. This yellow line is the 382 Fibonacci retracement. So this might be worth some risk. Um, if USD t USD head comes down and hits this 382 Fibonacci retracement, um, looking for it to push back up. And you know, right right now, and that's the thing. Like every time news comes out, and then everything looks like, oh shit, I missed it. Everything's bullish, and then like. A week later, a week and a half later, you know, everything turns bearish again and everything's bearish. So you have to like see these things coming. So just because the news and everything looks like, oh crap, you know, stocks are going up. This could be, you know, short term. So USDCAD, yeah, like I say, this, uh, I guess it would be the 1.32000 zero level or slightly higher so you don't you know miss out on the opportunity but i'm gonna put some risk sitting there uh when when price gets closer if it makes it there it should and this is why i'm kind of like iffy on some of my other trades because this still has a little bit of a little bit of room to go but usd cad moves more than the other ones do usually chart wise it moves much bigger distances than GBP or or Euro. So Euro, th this is kind of what I'm thinking right this second. I think Euro is, it, it already took out this high. So I think it's probably gonna come up and hit this trend line or uh, this, this area of weekly resistance, more than likely. And from here, maybe we'll get a pullback back down. But uh, check this out. Look at the weekly chart now. Let's let's make this full screen for you guys in case you're watching on a phone. Um, do you see it? Does anyone see it? So we have uh, shoulder. We have this swing. We have head. Now we have this swing, which is a rotation we have a bullish rotation now on the weekly chart we have a bullish rotation so that's that's a good sign that this is probably the bottom for euro this is probably the bottom so wherever this thing stops when it starts heading back down this is definitely going to be an area of interest to me to start buying euro again this is a weekly head and shoulders pattern so yeah this this could be something so when we get there, I'm gonna leave that line there for now, but that's definitely something I'm looking into. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't think we're gonna take out this high. I just think we're gonna come up a little bit more and then maybe start some sort of pullback back down for now. But I don't think I'm gonna trade Euro uh, right this second. I have my phone blowing up. Always. Uh, NZD USD. So NZD USD, we're about to hit this weekly, weekly resistance trend line here. And this is a weekly trend line. So I think, you know, monthly, that's that's pretty big. But weekly, that's that's also a pretty big, you know, trend line. So I, I think this is worth some risk. This is an optimist, optimal area, optimist prime area to uh, to take some risk. So, GBP USD took out COVID low. Euro USD took out COVID low. Um, 
USD CAD. Did, 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 USD CAD did not take out COVID high. Um, yeah, Aussie USD did not take out COVID low yet, and NZD USD did not take out COVID low yet, but it's very, very close. We came very close and it started coming up. But we had momentum to the downside. We don't have momentum to the upside. It is coming up choppy. We had nice momentum to the downside, choppy coming up. So, yeah, and then if you look look at NZDUSD on the monthly chart, you know, we have this high, we have a lower low, lower high, and here we are, we're coming down. So I think more than likely, we're gonna come down and make a lower low minimum. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, so, this is one trade in the books. Um, stop loss is above the last little high there. Let's see if we can kind of zoom in on this. Yeah, so I, I, I doubt that we're going to make it up to this little swing high here. So I think we'll come up a little bit more. This might even get filled tonight. I don't know. The only thing that's concerning is, uh, like I say, USD CAD has a little bit of room to run. So I'm, I'm just going to let these get filled and then I'm going to monitor price. Um, you know, once I'm in these trades and see what happens. But, you know, sometimes if you don't take the risk at the right spot, you miss out. You know what I mean? Because it just pops and it's gone. And GBP USD is getting very, very close to its trend line here. So, yeah, I think we'll probably. So, I, this is what I think is going to happen on GBP USD. We have this swing high here, and we have this swing high here. I definitely think we're taking out that swing high. We'll come up and hit the trend line. We might poke our heads through for a minute, but I do not think we're taking out that swing high. So I have a sell order there, stop loss above this swing high, and we're gonna go for a little bit long, like, this will be like a, not really a day trade, but a swing trade. I wanna get in here, and I wanna see like a, a deeper pullback back down to the trend line, or as close, as close to it as I can get, and take profit there, so. I'm going to stick with those two for now because chart wise they look the best to me. So GBP USD, NZD USD. Those two I have orders ready to go. USD CAD I'll watch and see what happens. And I don't I don't know that I'm going to trade anything else. Um, I don't know that I'll trade anything else this week. I'm considering Oh, did our daily candle close? Yes, it did. Our daily candle closed. Let's just zoom in on price for a second. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch price. I may or may not take any more trades this week I don't I don't want to give you know I just I don't want to throw my money away I honestly I just I want to get I want to get in you know where I want to get in if if I see price come like down hard I mean yeah like if price comes down hard and gets below this this trend line again or if we throw some sort of pattern that I that I recognize up here, this this could be, you know, this which, you know, what's going on right here. Th this could be a some, some sort of like reaction. So we might get some sort of like pattern here, and then and then possibly this starts dropping. Next, I, I don't know. It, it could. That's the thing. You know what I mean? And, I, and this is another thing I've noticed. That I'm that I'm doing wrong. I should have held. I should have held um, GBP USD 
and NZD USD today. I should have not had a, a take profit. I should have just let them go. Because if you zoom out, so let's go to, to Euro USD and then go to the daily chart, right? So do you notice when we had this big bullish move here, the daily candle closed like right at the trend line. It's not like it came up, hit the trend line, reversed, and went screaming in the other direction. Like I don't see that too often on this chart. It seems like it stays there. Even from the, the bottom side, you see it kind of stayed here. It closed, then the next day it started moving. So, I mean, I, I yeah, I should have, shouldn't have had that take profit or any of that. I should have just let this go and left it. Because if I had, if I had just left, the, you know, let the daily candle close, I, I would be up this week. But I reacted. I put stop losses in place. And, yeah. You know, see, these little things that we're learning, these are all little pieces and puzzle pieces that we need to just start putting together and uh, you know, figure out how to do this and make money. Profit, you know, make money consistently and, and be profitable at the end of the year. And I see a lot of people say that, oh, minimum you need like $100,000 to do anything in Forex. I, I, don't, I don't think so. You know, if you can make $1,000 a week, I'm, I'm happy with that. If I could make $1,000 a week for now, you know, your account would grow pretty quickly. And you don't have to withdraw. You can just grow your account. And then you'll have $100,000 eventually that you can place big trades. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, anyways. That's it for this one. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a thumbs up. I'd, I'd really, really appreciate it. See you in the next one.